Welcome to the first broadcast of the Marketing, Media and Money Show. Every month we'll be coming to you to discuss some of the latest trends, some of the key issues which are affecting the industry. We'll be talking to decision makers, thought leaders and influencers across the continent. My name is Tebe Galafeng. I'm your co-host. And I'm Gordon Muller. Today we're going to be addressing one of the most important issues globally and indeed across Africa facing media agencies. The issue of media transparency when it comes to transactions, the relationship between the media owner and the media agency and the third party of course, the advertiser. Today in studio we have with us Yvonne de Souza, who is the head of media and digital Africa for one of the world's largest multinational FMCH advertisers and Mr. Chris Boerter. Chris is the group managing director of the media shop which is one of South Africa's largest media agencies and indeed one of Africa's largest media agencies. And I think it, before I hand back to, to Tebby, uh, Chris, let me just uh, first of all congratulate you. This has been a very good week for the media shop. You have Thank won you uh, your r recognition back uh, as the number one media agency in South Africa through the most awards. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We're very honored. Thank you very much, Gordon. Cool. I hope that came with a big check, Chris. <laughs> uh, no, that would be a media rebate, which we're not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, it, comes with, it comes with a very nice wire sheep, actually, made out of Oh, I love that. Wire sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very well, charming. Well, I'm but, African, you know. But very we significant <laughs> and well done. It's, it's, it's a big much. thing for, for, for the local industry. Yeah. Thank oh. you very much. We're very honored. I'm glad we're talking, we're starting on, on media today uh, because this past week we've had a very interesting week uh, this week uh, where the competition commission uh, ruled that um, the media owners have been having a collusive uh, relationship among themselves and fixing prices. These are your friends. Yeah, indeed. You know, you've got to wonder what the Competitions Commission has been doing since 1859 because that's when the commission system was first promulgated by NWAs out of New York. So it, it's not something which is new. It, it's not a, a, a practice of setting commissions which has recently been formed by a cartel. This has been something that the industry has run itself on. In fact, it's the only business model in the world that was was promulgated, uh, you know, before the American Civil War. So it, it's. In and of itself, it's not a new thing, but it raises some really, really important issues for the industry going forward. And although it's not the topic for discussion today, it is certainly something we're going to be looking at over the next couple of weeks. Uh, one of the reasons it's not the topic today is that for many of the media owners, uh, the situation is still sub judice. So it is very unlikely that the key players will, will, will actually be in a position to comment today. But we know it's going to unpack over the course of the next couple of weeks. And we're certainly going to make it a topic because it's very, very relaxed. And you're looking nice and relaxed about it because right. it's directed at media agencies <laughs> and media owners yeah, rather than advertisers. So I like, uh, I like the idea because, you know, it seems to be uh, looking after the small agency. Uh, and you know, and uh, and uh, of course, it's a small media owners rather, yeah. uh, because it seems like they're the ones who've been uh, punished uh, compared to, uh, to the bigger ones. So the small agencies rather, who seem to be on the losing end uh, of, of, of well, this collusive behavior. Yeah, in the same in the same sense that any small purchase of any item, even if it was a, a chocolate bar or a truck, is is on the losing end when it comes to volume discount. Mm -hmm. But I think if you you know, it, it poses the question of agility in your response. You know, if, if I can't compete on price, then I have to compete on some other factor of agility. I have to be smarter, I have to be faster, I have to be wiser, I have to have a better understanding of your business. They, they, you, we have to create uh, a raft of platforms for competition rather than assume that the entire competition sits on this one particular raft, which is one of the rafts uh, you know, which is the price of transaction, but that actually puts us in a very good position to raise the discussion around the K2 report, was, which has been published in June of this year by the Association of National Advertisers out of North America, which has looked to a very large degree at the price uh, and, and, and the pricing of, of, of the buying and selling of media. But Chris, you're putting it nicely. They've said that uh, the ad buying industry is like organized crime. Now, you know, you're putting it in such beautiful language. Uh, you're not exactly saying what the report is saying. To me, that's the only mm. thing that I took out of the report, that this business is a business of criminals. Well, yeah, I mean, it is, it's an interesting... Uh, Tebby is uh, referring to a, a chart which 
came out of a, an ancillary report from the World Federation of Advertisers um, where they chose to juxtapose the value of media transactions versus the value of organized crime mm. on one axis and the conclusion is that the, the monetary value of these business practices, if and I use the term loosely, uh, are of equal stature, but there's an effort axis and it would appear that whilst media buying or, or ad fraud, as, as was the phrase that, that was used in the World Federation of Advertisers report, has the same magnitude uh, of value, it's easier to do apparently than organized crime, which is a very, very interesting very place for me after all these years to have myself on the same position as, um, well, as organized crime indeed. And, and that, you know, that's, uh, that's also from the World Federation of Advertisers. They represent 80% of global ad spend. So this was not, uh, a bunch of small players who've decided to its pick on agency week. Well, Chris, I mean, you head up one of the biggest uh, group across the con uh, continent, really. Is that your view of yourself? No. Uh, you know, the business no. that you're in? No, I think or do you I see yourself as just an outstanding member of this African community? Uh, the latter, most definitely <laughs> the latter. But I think one of the things I want to point out is, for starters, when we, when we go look at the report, um, and I'm not, I think just to, uh, to add a, a context to the report before we j even jump into the report, remember that the, the report was done by auditors, remember. Okay, so auditors... One could never trust those. Exactly. So an, an, an auditor gets incentivized to do some more auditing work. Second thing I want to add on before we start talking about uh, criminalizing so many of the, of, of the decisions that were, that were highlighting in the report, uh, n there was not a single person arrested post any of these decisions that were made. So I think, uh, I think we need to take... Oh, but you know, not uh, everybody always report. gets arrested out of every crime. Of course. Okay. <laughs> so, so, but I think the, 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 the take out from this report, I think it's highlighted some incredibly important things for mm. us as a media industry. And I think it's highlighted the lack of discussion that we as a collective has had yes. so far. Um, so I think for me, uh, the, the take out from the report is, is, is far more about um, how little we talk as a collective mm. and how much more we should be, do we should be doing a lot more talking, a lot more discussing with each other uh, in order to ensure this transparency. I talking think. as a collective sounds collusive already. Not what what do you mean talking as a collective? Uh, between media owners, between clients, between the agencies, um, uh, whether that be from a media perspective or from a creative perspective or from a communications perspective, I think it is about having that transparency in discussions and discussions uh, when it comes to all things money related. Right. Um, because once you have got that open and honest, transparent discussion, mm -hmm. right, immediately, then there's nothing to hide. Uh, I mean, as an example, we talk about uh, one of the things that the, 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 the K2 report touches on is media rebates. Right? The reality is that a media rebate per se is not illegal. Right. Well, it's However, it's the it's the it's the the transparency. It's the transparency, the lack exactly. of disclosure. So, so let, let's first of all just recap what was one of the findings of the K two report. I'd be, I'd, I'd be quite keen to get uh, Yvonne's view on this uh, in terms of your relationship uh, with Chris's ilk, yes. uh, the media uh, agencies. <laughs> uh, what is your relationship? Do you find like what he says? Is it that collaborative? Or is it that lack of collaborative discussion? So a lot of multinationals and a lot of companies in Africa have got a very lean organizational structure and in doing so have got very limited resources that are committed to actually focusing on media management which is one of the highest levels of spend in the organization. And when that happens, the challenge then comes where we don't have the collaborative relationships with our media agency partners, we deal with them as a supplier at an arm's length relationship. We say to them, this is what I'm prepared to pay you and I want to get this additional value over and above. And that puts the media agency partners in a very challenging position. And so yes, it sounds like to me they need to earn their money. I mean, that's, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. So I believe if we have the open and honest relationships and uh, the discussions, we're able to understand the media supply chain, yeah. take ownership of what aspects of that supply chain we should have visibility of, and then come to an agreement and an understanding with regards to media rebates exist. So is there a way that we could look at splitting that media rebate? How can we... How can we profit share? It's, it's, it has to be a combined effort and approach. And I think to a large extent, a lot of companies, advertisers, are pretty much trying to dictate to media agencies whilst not giving them the leeway and the flexibility.